Hello there. Welcome to this to my channel. In this video, we are going to be learning the basics of Laravel, meaning we are going to be learning how to create routes, views, controllers, and how to work with models. We are going to be coming out coming out by building this basic to-do list. So this to-do list is um, something we can have a single view page where you can view. Okay, we can update our post as you can see. Can update our post. We can delete our post. And also we can add to our post. So basically, this is going to be covering the basic code application. So the basic query read update, delete a beginner should know. Oh my god! Wow! And if you're interested in this video, please make sure you like, subscribe, and let's get started. Alright, so basically, like every tutorial, the first thing we need to go ahead and do is set up our project. So what I want to do is head over to documentation. As you can see, over to documentation, then we're going to click on your first Laravel project. So this is gonna bring us to, an, to a page that represents um, the installation within a project using um, Laravel. But instead of um, installing Laravel global, globally on our computer, you can go ahead and do Composer, but we're going to just create a project using Composer. Meaning, if you don't have Composer installed in your computer, you can, this can work. So make sure you head over to getcomposer.org and download a Composer for a specific system. So if you're using um, a Windows, Go ahead and download the exe file. Then, if you're using a um, command line like Linux or your Mac, you can go ahead and use this this to set up your composer. So once that is done, what you can go ahead and do is just copy this. Then go to your terminal, cd into the directory you want to create your project. So I'm inside my documents. Then my YouTube, basically where I put on my YouTube videos. Then I'm going to just paste in um, the code here. Um, so I'm just going to copy it again. All right, so once I've copied it, the thing you just need to change is the example app. So the example app is going to be the name of your app. So I'm going to name this app um, to do um, Laravel crash, crash Course. I mean. So I'm going to name this Laravel Crash Course. All right, so basically this is going to set up our Laravel project for us in this in this folder with the uh, folder name called Laravel Crash Course. So let's wait for this to finish up. All right, so once the installation is complete, now we can go ahead and see the into our project. So I name my project Laravel Crash Course. So you can go ahead and see it into Laravel Crash Course. So you see it into the name of the folder you created. So the name of the project. I'm just going to clear this, and I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code by doing code dots. I should just open up my project for me. And why that is actually open? Let's go ahead and do PHP at Cisan. So when you do PHP Artisan, this is going to list out commands of Artisan that is available on in Laravel. So without this, with everything listed out, what we want to actually look at first is this app. So basically, they say this app, the application on the PHP development server, basically this runs our local host for us. So what we can go ahead and do is PHP Artisan serve. Once we do that, this is going to serve our project for us on, in this URL. So I can go ahead and copy this URL. As you can see, head over to Chrome, then paste. And you can see our project is running successfully. Nice. Now you successfully run your project. In the next section, we are going to look at how to create a route system. So we are going to work with the route system in Laravel, meaning we can be able to like get to pages like about us and the rest. All right. All right. So in this section of the video, we are going to be looking at the routing system in Laravel. So without further ado, let's just get started. So what we want to do is add about our project. All right, and the router system of Laravel is located in the web file. So we can go ahead to routes so the routes for that and you can select to web. So this is where our routes as a system for our website is located. I think you are creating an API. So this is this. If you are creating an API, this is where you are going to write your routing for your API. But if you are creating a website like we have on the web or you can access through Chrome, Opera Mini, or any other browser. Is use the web or uh, web.php file. Now you can see this route is is, is a get request. So you can see here. So we have get requests, we have post requests, then we have um um puts which is like updates, then we have deletes, which is destroy. So you can see we have route gates and uh, we have return view. So this return view here, this view basically returns or you check inside. So the view returns um like like a particular file that would I want to be rendered out. I want, want to be rendered out. So basically, returning, we are returning return it's return the view 
welcome. So you are telling you basically return the view with the with the final welcome. So where is this welcome actually located? So the welcome there is located in the resources view. You can see we have the welcome blade.php. And this welcome blade.php is what we have here, which is this file here. So meaning if I should head over to the front where we have um the Laravel logo, basically. Trying to find it. I believe this is Laravel logo. I can say H word. Let's do that. Do a hello world. All right. So if I should save this, I believe so. We formatted everything for me. Now you can see we have hello world here. Basically, this is the welcome page. All right. So you can just go ahead and do all this. Uh, save it. All right. Now let's go ahead and create our first route. So the first route I want to create is an about route. So let's go ahead and create an about route. So to do that, what we are going to do is our routes. We are going to make this our route a get request because a push request can be accessed through the web browser because it's a request that we are posting to the server. So we can access it. So for this case, I'm just going to do about and I'm going to pass in a function. Then this function, I'm just going to return an h1. All right, so I'm going to return an h1. That says hello world. Then yeah, go ahead and close it. Don't forget your semicolon and also your semicolon in this place. Good. So once this is saved now, I can go ahead to my browser and now I like I go ahead and do about. And you notice we have a hello world here. So this hello world here, we can go ahead and change this to let change it to something like about us. All right, so we refresh, you can see we have about us. Now let's go ahead and just create like another route for contact us actually. So you can call this contact us. All right. Contact us, good. So we've learned how to create our route now. And I remember I was talking about the post request. So many, but we already have points post request to this route. And I refresh, we have an error that says, the get method is not supported because once you load something to your browser, it is a get request. But when you post, when you send to server, it is a push request. So that is the reason why that is not working. Let's set it back to the get request. Now, so this is a basic, uh, basic router system that is used. Now, there's a, there's a case where we can have a route like this. We can have your URL. We can have a route like, let's say, profile. Let's say we have profile, right? Then we can now have your username. So this username now, we want to grab it in our in our browser. We want to return this username. How are we going to do that? Is actually is what we want to do is now. Let's get and create another route. So I'm just going to copy this. So we are going to create a route parameter. So we can comment this and say route parameters. All right. So now we can go ahead and just create a profile. I'm going to go ahead and call this, just go ahead and add in the, uh, the quality breezes. I'll uh, call this, I'm um, using it. We can see, we can just call it um, welcome. Okay, let's just make it welcome only. Now, let's go to profile. And click on enter. You see, we have a 404 error. Now, we should go to something like add my username. And you see it's loading. Now, we have welcome now. But I want to grab this, the username here. So what are the fastest ways to grab this username using the um, route request? So I can go ahead and do something like, uh, uh, I believe I can do something like this. So I can point, I can do, I can request it now, I can do routes. So where is the route? I want to grab the username dot, I'm going to close our H1. All right, so I should refresh this. But you see other words. You have an error that says rat username is not defined. Yeah, because this rat username here is um is like a rat shortcut that lo that locates this stuff with their names because a rat can have a name. Yeah, so I, I think I made a mistake there. So yeah, let's go ahead and pass a request here. Not that request actually. We want to pass a request, which is eliminate HTTP. You see it when you pass it at the top here. That we want to pass there. I've got a request. 
Now nah, in this place now, we can just get a request our username. Alright, so if I should refresh this now, now you can see we have welcome the impressions. So this is actually um easier when you start working with controller. We don't need to use request every time we want to fetch for the URL. But because we haven't created the controller yet, so this is actually how we are going to do it. Now I talked about routes having names, yeah. So meaning for each route, we can go ahead and assign a name to it. So I can go ahead and call this a name. This can be home. All right. So basically, that is a first tab. We'll go ahead and have a name for this one, which can be a. Uh, this is about. Uh, this is a uh, contact. I'm just going to add a name for all of them. So this is contact. And this one here is going to be a. Uh, name is going to be, uh, going to be profile now how do we test this now so we can go ahead and create another route we can go this get i can just call this redirect because i want to redirect them to um to the contact page so i can go ahead and do that so i can do function function all right then i can go ahead and do return redirect so what do you want to redirect to so you can see direct um, route so to whatever I want to do. So you want to direct to which route. So this route is going to accept our route name. So our route name is contact. All right, so I can save this now and if I should go ahead to redirect. You see we are going directly to the contact page. So basically that allows us to work with um, our URLs. Meaning in, 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 in a case where you have a where we where we change this stuff to like these jargons like this, I will able to redirect redirect. You are still going to come back to this page, but you just notice that you are the last change. So basically, that makes it easier for us to edit our file rather than us going to each of you and start changing them. We can just call the name here. So once we change the name here, everything is going to affect everywhere you call it inside inside of. All right, so now we've covered the basics of routing. The next thing we are going to be looking at controllers. All right, so in this section of the video, we are going to be creating our controller. Now, to create our controller, let's go ahead and open up our terminal. So I have my terminal open now. So we can go ahead and do PHP artisan. If we should run this command again, we are going to find out that we have make here. So this under this make here, there is a controller, there is a command called make controller. So this creates a new controller class for us. All right, so we can go ahead and call that PHP artist and make controller. So this make controller, we accept the name. So we are going to call this, uh, let's call this home controller. All right, so basically this has created the controller for us. Where did it create it? We created it in the app. Uh, we head over to the app, HTTP controllers. You see our home controller here. So the first thing I want to do is create a function for our about page so i'm just going to return return view so we're going to return view oh sorry not view actually we don't have a view yet so i'm just going to return an h1 about us all right so we want to have an h1 about us so save this now, once that is done already, when we have this about us here, we can just go ahead and clear everything here. Now, we can go ahead and put a bracket here. So, this bracket is going to accept a controller. So, our controller is going to be home controller. As you can see, and basically, this will import the home controller at the top here. So, once you have controller, I want to specify that I want the class. Then, inside of the class, I want to specify my method name, which is about here. So, the name I gave it here, that's what I'm going to call inside here. So once that is done now, I can just go ahead and close it. Don't forget our name. Now you can go ahead and add a name. Our name here is um, about. Good. So we can just save this. Now we should go back to the about page. So let's go to about. You can see we still have the same thing. Basically everything still works as expected, but now we just have a meta web.php file. So let's go ahead and do that for the, uh, for the, uh, for the contact, so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to replace everything here. This is going to be contact. Well, that is, that is beautiful for a format. 
<laughs> I like the way you formatted this. We are going to get back to this one actually very soon. So now for this, we can just get up, change this to contact. Or I can name this contact us. So we should head over to the contact page. Like I can see our contact us also works as expected. Now the next one to do now is our profile here. You can remember it accepts a parameter. So what we can do is basically we can clear everything that we have here, and we have to point to our home controller. Then specify the class. Then inside of you, we are going to just specify our profile. So our pro the method is going to be profile. We can just get that in this profile. Nothing more, just as usual, just shutting everything. Now in our um in our own controller, we can go ahead and call our a method, create a method, call it profile. Now this profile here, we are going to specify it accepting a value which is called username. Why is it accepting a value? Because we are passing it a, a value here. So it's going to accept a value also. Go down, we can just get and do return h1. So just going to call the username here. All right, so call the username here. So basically, this thing I did here is a, is a way to render uh, variables in um, PHP uh, between a string. So uh, hopefully this should work in the lab side. So now, if you go to the profile, and I click on the pressure, so you can see, this is the rendering out. This is Axtor, so it's not actually working. Uh, maybe I did something wrong, I'm not sure, but so I'm just going to close this, add this one here, and do it like this. So save this and let's try it out again. Now you can see we have the pressures here, and uh, you can see, like we have previously, welcome the pressure. Now you can see this is actually easier because we don't have to pass a request to do what we want to do. And this um, redirect, uh, we can just leave it like that because it's not actually doing anything. And yep, that is basically everything you need to know about controller. Is there is an addition or letting on the feature we are at. In this section, we are done with controller. So the next section, we're going to look at models and uh, how to interact with the database. All right, so now let's take a look at models in Laravel. Now, the same thing, yeah, let's get and do PHP artisan. Now, we should do PHP artisan. We also Go to the make section we find out we have make model here so this model basically allows us to um communicate with our database so i think that is easy way for me to say it so once we, when we want to make a model we are going to also create a migration with it so to do that we are going to do php at the make model so i'm going to create a model called list so you're going to give it a name list you are going to give it an iphone of m so we are basically telling it that okay once you're creating a model also create a migration file so migration file is um uh, okay now it's a list is reset by is a reset word so let's just say list data All right so model name is list data so this migration here is basically what we need to include so as when we run our migration it will be to be returned in our um, in our page admin so basically our page admin here so for example is this i should go to this database table here so I should go to this users here. So basically, if I should go ahead and specify all this data here, all this username name, it does what we render here. So basically, what's what's right it here? Everything works in this particular migration here. I mean, we sure the migration is going to render them out here. You see that in the, in the GIF now. So let's go ahead and create a new database. So I'm going to call it a uh, to-do list. Basically, I going to build a to-do list for us to understand Laravel. So basically, this is a crash course. Do so you want to have a to-do list now? So once your to-do list is, has been created, the database has been created, what you want to do is head over to your interview file and set to database credentials. So the only thing you want to change is just the to-do list. And also if your use, database username is different, make sure you pass it here. And if your password is different, make sure you also pass it here. So save this and um, yep, we should be good to go. So now the first one is to have an ID by default. So every table will have an ID. Then now once you get out of uh, Let's get have a string. Call this tie to. I can call this uh content actually. So for this content here, we are going to make it a text. 
All right, so meaning we want it to receive a large amount, a large number of strings because this string is like 255 characters in total, as I believe. But the text is just like the text there that receives an amount of text. So once that is done, now we can just go to do PHP at this side, uh, migrate. This is going to create some migration for us. So you see, it also created all these other migrations for us. You can see this uh, the one that comes with Lava. You can see th these files were created in 2014. I believe that was when um, Lava started. I believe. And we also have another file that was created in 2019. So these are the files that come with Lava that right. Now the 2022 is the one that we just created now, which is this list data. So we should go back and I like, click on structure now. You're able to see all of them. But I should click on this data the table now. You can see ID title context that we added. Now let's start by working with our model. So what first one to do is add about our model. So you, what you have to do is now you add about your app, select models, and select list data. So this user model here is comes default with Laravel. So that's when you want to work with authentication or you want to allow your you want to work with your user database. Now we have our list data here. For this list data, I want to specify something called protected label. So the reason why we are adding this protected label is because we want to be able to save title and context in our database so without specifying title and content we'll not be able to save anything to our database so basically that is in use now so we have to be attending our system okay we want to accept title and content meaning if you should go ahead and process something like about we want to save the database it's not going to go through because it is not part of the field labels in this place good so now since so that is actually the way the first one to do is uh, let's go ahead and look at how we can insert data. So I'm going to create a new function called insert so that we can save our data to database. I'm going to create a um, web.php. So I'm just going to copy this. So yeah, I'll copy this, paste this right here. I'll call this a, uh, what do I call it? Insert. All right. Good. So now once we have this insert, the first one to do is um, just, we can just go and call list data. So this is going to call our list data model for us. As you can see, it's going to import it at the top. Now you can go and do insert. I'm sorry. You can go and do insert actually. So this insert is going to accept an array, an array of data. So should over, I'm trying to see if I can over now. So it's not working. So we can go ahead and do insert. And remember the first one to get is our title. So we can see, Hello world. And this is our context. All right. So we can just call this hello world context. All right, good. So basically, now if I should head over to our browser and I head over to insert and I save this, you see we have no response there. We have no error actually. That is because our data has been saved to the database. Check it out so you can see it has been created to the database. Now, instead of using this insert here, we also we can also just change this to create because create is like the most common, common one they use. So now if I should refresh this, this also say to the database, refresh. And you can see this create adds our created data and our updated data. So the time that we created our feeds, you can see it's added here because we use the create method. And there's also other method that the uh, can use initially. All right, so the other method we can use now, you can just get our code inside. I've got this list, all right. So we can now to a new list data. So we are calling it. I right, can just go down to a list. I'm gonna select our title. So basically, it's your choice to use what you want to do. Hello, new method. All right. So you can go ahead and load new method. We can just copy this and make this content. Now we got biggest content. All right. Now once this is a content, now we can just get and do uh list. And we can get our pass and save. So basically, this is just save. It's the same thing as this one, but we can just do it this way. So we can just do it this way, and um, so we can just do it this way. So we could join to our browser. And I refresh. We have no error, and if we check this, you can see it's also created now. So it depends on you on the one you want to use actually.
So I'm just going to comment this because I prefer using this one instead. Now that we've learned that to save, now let's go ahead and read our data. So I'm just going to create a new function here. What do you call it? Read. All right. So once I have read down, so create a new route. Then I create a new route. Okay. So new route and start. We can just do read. Okay. Now let's go back to the read. So just read here to fetch our data. We can just go and do list equals to list data call. Yeah, basically, then it's uh, yeah, uh, sorry. No, basically, need to fetch all our data and to render this out. Why I use I like doing this because we don't have a view yet, so we can just go ahead and do die and dump, which is like instead of using printer, we can just go ahead and use die and dump. So, this is list instead, all right? List. So, now let's go to a browser, we should go to read. Now, you have our array item here. You can see we have three of three data, so we should check original. The first one, check the second one. The data is so basically this is returning our three data for us. So now instead of using this one, we can just make it for so we can go ahead and do something like for each list as list. Alright, so for each is a list, we can go ahead and just do echo tie to list tie to. PR. Uh, we can call this content also. And uh, we can just change this to content. All right, save this and let's refresh. Now you can see our data is now being rendered out on the database, on the database now. Very good. And now, maybe in, in the case you want to uh, get a list by the latest like when they were created so we can go ahead and do latest here we're going to specify get so once you make a latest we can now go ahead and specify get so basically saying find the latest data then get the like fetch all of them so we should refresh this you can see hello new method is actually the first one you can see because this time it was created at 956 and this is actually uh, uh this is 1059 so it was um created at that time so it's other than by the latest Good. And um, there's also other things we can also do. Uh, we can do it in, uh, in random, I believe. We can do it in random, in random order or in random, I'm trying to figure it out. Yep, yeah, so it's not in random, so we can do it in random order, I believe so. Refresh, so this is just going to like print them in random orders. Let's head over back to the latest get. Now, good, we fetch out our data. Next one to do is how can we fetch a single data? So this is where the route parameter comes in. So let's go ahead and create a function. I can name this single. Now this single here we're just going to pass in an ID. Alright, so we're going to pass in an ID that we can go ahead and just do in our route here. We're going to do routes. We can say single. Then don't forget that route parameter here, ID. We can just turn this name and this to single. Now, in our single here, we can just get a do list equals to list data find. So, find ID. So, this is just going to fetch our, uh, it's going to run this query in our database. Select all from list data where ID is equals to this ID. Basically, that's what it's going to do. So we can say find, then we can just go and do um, echo list um, title. So we want to download the title. Now we should go to single, single slash one. As we have a low word, we should go to single slash three. We have a low word. Now we should go to single slash four. Remember, we have only three, three data there. So we should, sorry. Sorry, my bad. We should go to single slash four now. 
or any number 34 whatever so you see we have attempt to report passing or not basically we can i believe we can prevent this by just doing something like this all right so that will return not because it is mc ball we don't want to do this so we just we can just return a basic four for error so which is actually available in laravel so we can to find or fail so basically find it here if it's not available just return four for not found Good, so that is one way of doing it. So I'm just going to comment this out. Comment this. Now, the other way of doing it is that instead of using this ID, we can just use route model binding. Route model binding is just like specifying the type of the ID. So instead of using ID here, we can use this list data, meaning we have to go to our web.php now and change this to list data. But now we can just basically just do echo list data title i should save this and i refresh we have four four error now five you can see when we go to theory we have a little new method one hello word so it depends on the one you want to use and um the use case that yeah, you want to use it so the next thing we'll go ahead and do is uh let's try and update a value all right so to update the value Let's go ahead and create a function. I've got this update. So this update is passing an ID. Okay. All right. So for the update, so basically you notice that we're already building the logic of our to do our part chart. We are explaining how we work with model. So the next thing we do, what we just have to do is render our views and yeah, that's actually going to be everything. Well, now let's just um, go ahead and do our update. So now our route also, I'll go ahead and copy this. So for this update, we are going to need our ID and basically this is going to be update. So once to update it post a list by an ID. So we can just go ahead and do um, something like list data where so we can use where where ID is equal to this ID that we are passing from our from our route. Uh, yeah, we can just go ahead and pass in um, a specific stock called updates. So this is going to accept an array. So this array is basically like the one we have recently. So we can just copy this. All right, so I'll copy this. We can just add an uh, updated here. So to show it has been updated. And we should go back to our browser. Now we should go back to our browser. Now we go to update. Update. So now let's do our update number three. Now you can see we have no response, no error. That means that we updated. Check it out. You see a low word updated. A low word content updated. All right. So this is how we can update. Then you can also update using the routes model binding. So meaning we can do list data. And uh, we can just uh, comment this out. So you can see I now call this list data also. All right, so save this and uh, copy that and yeah, and then our ID we can paste our list data here. That's just in this place. Now what we can just do is just do list data, or we can basically call update here. So it's going to find our ID by itself and just update it. Uh, we can just copy this here. So, so that we know that it has been updated, we remove this updated, there, save it back and return it back to the way it was. And let's refresh. No error, check it out. That's it has been updated. Uh -huh. Very simple, I know, right? Good. Now, the next thing, basically, the last one to do is just delete. Let's go ahead and delete this. So, you can go ahead and do delete. All right. We're going to go ahead and call delete on this case. Uh, and you and when you want once we start working with routes and uh, views, I mean, every, every this thing that is gets like this insert that is gets here is going to become a post request. So basically, we will take note of that very soon. So let's delete. So this delete here, we are just going to use the routes model binding also. The list data and basically, I can just go ahead and call list data. Or need to call delete and to delete it for us. So in our update, you can just copy this. 
paste this so i'll call this delete all right then now our sorry what what just happened so now our updates we can go ahead and delete post of theory so i should check it out as it has been deleted push so basically now we've done the basic stuff so what we did now was actually um for the application so we did create read update and delete very nice right good and uh, yep so we had basically done with the basics of model so in the next video we are going to work with our views and um or we round up from this video all right now let's add a creative view so to create a view here we don't actually need to make use of um, this php artist so what we can do is add over to our resources go to views and i'm going to create a file so i'm going to create a file called uh, index so once you specify index i'm going to specify blade.php so when you specify blade.php it will allow, allow us to use the blade syntax that comes with laravel so that's like a templating engine Right, so the first one to do is uh, add, our, add our HTML and inside our HTML, I'm just going to grab uh, something from here, which I believe is um, Tewin CSS. Look for Tewin CSS. Right, so Tewin CSS is mine. I'm just going to, I'm going to grab it from their website. Tewin CSS. There's a way to install Tewin CSS with Laravel, but we are not looking at that. We are focusing on Laravel in this tutorial. So let's go to Tewin CSS, click the CDN and just basically copy everything. All right, good. So save that and um, our title, let's get our title here. So the, for this title here, we can go ahead and access EMV. We can go ahead and access EMV. We can go ahead and app name. So it is not actually going to work now because we have to specify this in the templating engine so in our double curly buses must touch as you can call it good now where is this env coming from so this env is actually what we have here so env so it's going to just write out laravel so you can change this to my app so yeah you can change this to my app now so how can we render that out so in our home controller here where we have um, all this um, we have read so where we have this read here we're just going to comment um delete all this mm -hmm. uh, we'll leave this one because i'm going to make use of this we are going to do return view so what we do want to return index save this and let's go back to our browser and let's go to read as we have my app and we have 10 css loading so let's just go ahead and design this so for this i just want to have um, a deal read this item center then a screen all right so if you want to learn three sessions i have a tutorial about that so you go ahead and watch it uh, then i want to have a deep rounded md the bg gray of uh, 100 protection white and I want to have a pattern of eight. Then uh, basically I'm going to make this one over three. Then I can now go ahead and do span x to Excel my lists. So let's save this and check it out. Refresh this. Yeah, good. So we have my list here. Very nice. Now I'm just going to have a grid here. I'm going to have a padding top of uh, let's say three. Okay, so inside this place now we can go ahead and now pass it out for each loop. So before we pass it out for each loop, in our own controller, we can go ahead and do something like this. Oh, we'll have this, so we can go ahead and call lists and array. Like I see list is equals to our list variable here. Very good. So now we can go to our index blade. We can just go ahead and do at for each so basically it's like using the normal php for each syntax and don't forget you have to add adam and for each now for each one so for each list as 
list. We basically, this list is what we passed from our controller here, as you can see. So for each list at least, we can just get and do our PIV. I'm trying to figure out, I'm going to design this. Okay, we can do PIV, we can do BG, gray. With 600, okay, I have a, um, I mean, it's a grid. A bit to do, a bit folder. I'm going to do span text large. This is going to be the title. So I'll master or double curly braces. So say list title. So save this and check it out. So refresh as we have a load. I'm always waiting for this stuff to reload because there is vital Laravel. So Laravel is, is auto, allows auto reloading. That's why that's why that's why I'm waiting for it to reload. So basically, the invite is not installed in this project, so it's not auto reload. So I added rounded, and I'm going to add a padding of let's say at the top of three. I believe so because I'm waiting for it to reload again. No, I want them to be like a little bit rounded. Okay. So I have space among each other. So. Right, gotta do gap, add gap here. Let's get a gap of three here. Fresh. Okay, very good. Now, inside, I'm just going to give it a pattern of six to make them a little bit big. I keep waiting for this to reload. <laughs> and save this, and we can call this content. So, we can just make this SM so that I like saying small text. Oh, sorry, refresh. Yep, so we have that, and um, yep, so basically that should be let's send this to an A and hit that because I want it to be clickable. Um, uh, is it clickable? Nope, so the div cannot be clickable. Let's just make the title only the title clickable. All right, so the titles are clickable. HRF. Okay, good. So it is clickable now. Uh, we can just see want to read, read, uh, redirect them to remember single. I'm going to say redirect to route, specify the route. And this route here, I'm going to specify our single. So this single here is, is the name that is accepted. So the name is uh, of our single result, single here. So I should save this and I refresh. We're actually going to get an error because we have to pass our list data here. Remember, we only passed our single year, so we have to pass our list data. Let's get and do a list ID. So we should refresh this. As it's working now, so we should click on this hello world single two hello world. Very nice. And um, what I want to do now is uh, basically this one here. I'm going to cut it, cut it out, and I'm going to make it a flex. All right, so I'm going to add this inside a div. This one will be inside a div of read, just like the way they had before. So, like this, I'm just going to add um, another div. It's going to be button dot bg red 500 dot text should be white, it should be rounded. MD for so that rounded medium actually. So rounded medium then um PX of six and PY of three. We can just say delete. Alright. So we should have delete for each of them here. But I just gotta maybe justify between. Alright, very good. So once that is done. Uh, what I want to do is style this um, red page. So basically, we, we just want the same design here. Uh, copy that. Then our views here, we have to get another file called uh, single.blade.php. So paste that here. So before we move on now, let's go to our own controller here. Look at this thing there. We don't want to so, uh, have this type of code every time. Basically, we can go ahead and have compact lists. So basically, what you name this variable is what you're going to pass here, and it's going to convert it to 
what we need and we don't need to touch this one actually so we should head over back there refresh everything still works as expected so i like using the compact now for this single here we don't want this for each so what i want to do is uh, basically um i just want to cut this out and place it over here all right now in our home controller here what we have a single so we can just go ahead and do return view to be single now since view is single we can now go ahead and compact our list list data so i believe i can pass this data from this place to this place and yep we should go to single now we have an error that says this is not defined so yeah we have to change all this list to list data as a list data so refresh good so you can see we have a um, single element here so where we have this my list here, we can just change this to uh we tie to okay I just make it texture large. All right, good. Well, you can do it anyhow you want to do it. Good. So once this is done, what we want to do now is post. So meaning at the top of our single here, we want to have a form at the top here. So where we have um, this one, what I can do is I can basically just copy this, and I can paste it here so it will appear two times. As you can see, so appear two times. I can say create list. Right, so you can have create list, and um, for this, you can just have a form method should be post. So remember, I want to send a post request. All right, so I want to send a post request. Now you can have our input text. I already put feed I mean so if you should save this and I refresh so I input feed here and our input feed I just get a style is surrounded MD W pardon of three so let's save and refresh and that's what we have good so that is what we have now and we can just get a pass in place with a type two and um Next one, you can just go and do text here. The text here is also the same thing. So the same code, copy, the same class, I mean. We got a placeholder context. All right, good. I remember this is a grid uh, with a gap of three. Okay, so we can just pass in this here. Refresh, good. So we have that now. When this is done now, in our name here, we have to specify our name. So we have to say this is tied to and this is content. All right, once that is done now, in our form, we have to specify the route to our post request, so which is route at uh, I believe we named it in SAT. So we named it in SAT, and for this is SAT here, what we have to do is not. Change this is out to a post request. Good. So refresh, everything works fine. And I almost forgot something actually. So we have to do our button. We have to have a button. So I'm just going to copy this button. Copy this button in our form. I'm going to paste it here. So instead of red, I'm going to use blue here. And I'm going to call this posts. So refresh. Good. so we have post now right so this will actually work well, i should go ahead and uh no this will not actually work yet sorry so we have to go ahead to our uh, insert here and we have to pass in request so this request is like basically turning to we are accepting a bunch of requests post requests from our database from our front end so when this is done we can just go ahead and replace this with request Tied to that is the name of our input feed. 
are here to request content. Save this and we should refresh. We are going to pass in our data here. So you can also our texts actually. Yeah, so we have to head over back to our class and let's say text black. Okay, now let's get the drugs put in random store. Posts, you have page expired. Why? The reason why you have page expired is because you need to spec specify CSRF here. The CSRF is like to prevent XSS, so hacking, so to prevent hacking, like a security measure for us. So, yeah, that's right, what we need to do. So, so, we have that, we can just go ahead and retry this again. And let's go ahead and click post. So you redirect us to the insert page. So we should check it out. We have it there. Now let's go back to read. Now we have to want to make a few changes. You can see it is showing you now. We want to make a few changes. So one of the few changes we, want, we first want to make is um, this one here. We can just go ahead and give this padding top of six because I don't want them journeys together like that. Okay, trying to just divide them. What if I do padding? Yeah, be part of top of six in between there. All right, good. So we want to add validation to this stuff. So to add validation here, I just gotta do error. So for each error, this is going to accept the name, which is title here. We I just gotta do span text red five hundred. message so this is going to be a message so this is going to render the particular message based on the name that we provided here and also for the text here let's go and do it also this is going to be content so this will not actually validate it because we have to go to our our insert here and we have to specify validation so we're going to request validate so what you want to validate some validate the type to we can make this required and also our content. So once that's required there, here yeah, now we can add something like minimum of three characters. So you must have at least three characters to be able to make a post request. And we should go there and refresh. Now if I should click on post, you see we have title field required, content field required. And if I should make this like two words, and I click on post. I see title must be at least three characters. So that is working now. The last thing we need to do is um after we've created our data, we want to return with direct. No, we don't want to return direct, we want to return back. So once it leaves, because if you click on push request, it will, it will take them to the inserts. So once that is done, I want it to take them back to the to the read. You see back. And once you are going back, I want you to go with the success message that says created all right now let's go to our index blade so we can add we want to add our sources and suggest so at the top here i'm gonna to say if session because the the source uh, back the width is going to return as a session so if it has a uh, a key which is sources i give it so we can go and do span dot text green 500 the inside of it now you can go ahead and just press a section call this particular section i say get get sources it's basically just going to get the value of the sources and we can go ahead and do end if good so that is done refresh i can say test test click on post Turn us back, and you can see post created, and we can also have our post here. Good, you can click on it. All right, so let's work on the delete. Um, so the delete is actually the same thing, everything that we need. The last thing we just need to do is uh, we can just return back. We don't need to pass any session, we can just return it back. Then, meaning in our, uh, in our index blade. So this one is changes on a tag and we can just go ahead and do href equals to route delete. 
and I believe it's accepting an ID. So route delete refresh. So let's get and delete this. If we delete this, you see it has been deleted. It has been deleted from the database. All right. Good. So next we want to do now is update. But before we do updates, remember we have this in our single page. So let's gonna copy this. Go to the single. Go to the single there, you can just paste it right here. I remember this is this data. Alright, good. So once this is done now, we want to go ahead and do updates. So uh I said create list list. So for this index here, what we can do is uh copy everything, just stay with me, copy everything, and our view, we can go ahead and create it. View called updates.blade.php. Paste that in there. And um, yeah, so basically, that is the only thing we need. And we can just go ahead and delete this. All right, the only difference that we're going to make is as this one is going to be value equals to list, list data, uh, list title. And also you have list contents. Okay, menu. So we have to first create a controller that will render out our, our our data for so update. So so let's say function update view. So you can call this update view list data. So this data is basically just like um, this single stuff here. Okay, then this is going to be updated instead. All right, so we also set that in our view. So let's go to where we have this updates. What we need to do is copy this. Then at the top here, we are just going to paste this here. Get updates. So we can make this um, the same thing and just change this one to post so this one here we change the the method to update view remember all right so we can just make this on post so basically they are still going to work the same way now we should go to update then we have to change this route to update and um we don't need this one here so this service is going to take a list list id and yeah. check on controller okay the list data we are passing so it's going to take a list data all right so when that is done all we can do is just add about to update one all right so you can see we have updates there and um, what i can do here is i made a mistake i can just remove this save Refresh, you can see it is working as expected. But uh, we can just make this update. And one last thing to do is after it has been updated, I can just copy this. So I can copy that, otherwise, I will say post updated. All right. So if I should click on update, um, then let's go to the read. You see, we have nothing. Basic has updated, but we have to fix something else up. So meaning, now our index blade here. I'm just going to call this. I'm going to make this a flex. And this is going to be a um, Updates. All right, so it's going to be updates, and this is going to be green. Yeah, I can go ahead and do space X or four item center. Refresh. 
or should be having updates like this good so you should go to updates we direct us to updates like i'm going to do updated click on updates i'm supposed to return uh back okay no okay we're not we're not going back click i should refresh this okay i'm not sure it's even updating oh yeah it's not that it's updating with the same parameter here so yeah we have to just make this request 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 then um this will, this will be requests by two and also this will be request um, content All right, very good. Then um, we can just copy the validation that we have here. So to make sure that validation also works, copy the validation there. And this will not return back. So let's return route. So to, to watch route, we want to return to the read route. So we say return a direct. So we return it direct to the route read, then with the success message, we'll stop detected. So let's refresh this and let's try and update this. So let's say updated. Let's click update. And you can see our post updated and it has been updated already. Yeah, so basically that's everything you need to know about Laravel as a busy beginner. Then you can go ahead and start exploring how to be um, big thing. So I made a tutorial on how to create a social media using other than Live If you're interested, go ahead and watch the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.